2022 has been interesting for MMOs. First, we had New World do this. <laughs> then we had a mixed bag of expansions, some that hit the mark, and others that missed the content part of the expansion. But can I pause here and just say how much I adore Billy Boyd? <laughs> ESO has really just knocked it out of the park with their voice talent. Like, I mean, that alone makes me want to go play that MMO. Now, Amazon got a second shot at the MMO market this year by bringing forth a game that has been long awaited and porting it to the, the North American and European markets. Now, this game taught us all about what predatory monetization is. We have come for you. No, not, not that game. This, this game. So halfway through 2022, you might say it's been a bit mixed. But is there anything for us still to look forward to for the latter half of the year? Get nothing. You lose! Okay, so that's not entirely true. We actually have some long in development MMOs that may finally be moving over to launch, potentially shedding their testing phases and giving us the final product. Hopefully those long developed games do a little bit better than say the game that I was very interested in, Crowfall, that kind of stumbled out of the gate when they finally did launch. But only time's gonna tell. There's of course gonna be plenty of expansions for existing titles, as we get pretty much every year, and perhaps some optimistic speculation on testing phases for some deeper in development MMOs. Let's break all of that down. To the shock of no one who's been around EverQuest or its sequel over the last few decades, we'll be getting new expansions for both of these stalwart MMOs. So if the current offering of nostalgia debt progression servers aren't your forte, and P99 is too hard for you, like me, then you'll be getting some new content to roll around in toward the end of the year. They'll both follow the same release pattern based on what we got from the roadmaps. We'll get the expansion beta and pre-orders in October and launches in December. You know you're doing something right when your sequel is launching its 19th expansion. I, I can't say enough good about these MMOs. Perhaps hoping to get the bad taste of their last expansion out of people's mouths, Dragonflight was announced for World of Warcraft this April. Given how Activision Blizzard likes to take their time with expansions, It was a bit surprising to see the confirmation that Dragonflight would actually be launching in 2022. No word yet on if your dragons will have 5-5 legendary gem sockets. But at least we know that it'll be coming sometime before December 31st, 2022. That's that's exact that's what they actually said. Sometime before December 31st, 2022. So at least there's that to look forward to if you are still giving the game the chance. But Dragonflight isn't the only news about WoW. Following an EverQuest footsteps of cashing in on your nostalgia in a way that will ultimately only briefly satiate that gaping hole in your heart you used to fill with late night grind sessions fueled by Mountain Dew and loneliness, WoW will be expanding their current classic offering by releasing Wrath of the Lich King. Now, Wrath of the Lich King was actually the expansion that really solidified World of Warcraft as an interesting game to me back when it first launched. I expect this to have a lot of appeal, but it's interesting to see World of Warcraft going this, this way of, try, of splitting their population into the progression server type game and the, the live server. Now, EverQuest has done this successfully for years, and so have some other games like Lord of the Rings Online, but it's still up in the air to see how well this will do and how well the how much of a pull Wrath of Lich King has. Speaking of older games, Lord of the Rings Online will be getting some more story content following the adventures of Elodin and Elrohir, Elrond's sons. Now, I'm completely new to Lord of the Rings Online, having only recently started my adventures there, 
but I'm excited to see them adding more story content this year as well as bringing back an event, the Treasure Boogan event. I'm probably mispronouncing that and you can correct me down in the comments. I've really been enjoying this game. I was drawn in by some of the major changes made this year that opened up a lot of the game to free to play players back in April for the 15th anniversary. Later this year, we'll also be getting some additional class race combos and a promise of more information in the next letter about Legendary Worlds, this game's version of progression servers. If you followed along with some of my other videos, you'll know that this is the game that EG7 alongside DCUO seems to be focusing on for future updates. I think the Rings of Power TV series is a powerful motivator for that. Free advertising is free advertising, right? Now moving on to a game that does not have progression servers, ESO likes to stretch out their expansions, known as chapters, across the year with DLCs. If we follow a similar pattern for the previous expansion, Blackwood, we should get the second and third DLC later this year, likely in August and November of 2022. ESO is one of those games I put a lot of time in but always found myself collapsing under the weight of the endgame gear grind. Perhaps I tried too much PvP. Getting your face kicked in in 0.5 seconds, is, it's, it hurts one's pride. A little pride I may have anyway. I don't have a ton. I'm a YouTuber. Contrary to popular opinion, no, New World isn't dead. Okay, it's not yet dead. New World, for all its failures, has continued to push out updates. The Arena update, which I wasn't able to test due to the queues not popping, was big, but two new updates promised a lot more. New World is testing out instruments, which are a rhythm action based trade skill which you can play solo or in a group of up to five adventurers. They will be more than just immersion too, as they'll provide a trade skill XP buffs. Honestly, I love this. Bands were one of my favorite things in Star Wars Galaxies, and I wish more games would add player musicianship to their games. Final Fantasy XIV and Lord of the Rings Online are two other games that let you apply your musical talents. But I mentioned a second big update, and that big update is relating to dungeons. New World will be adding a dungeon finder and removing the ridiculous and completely unnecessary requirement to join dungeons by crafting. So maybe they'll free up and maybe I'll do my first New World dungeon because to date, with 140 plus hours in the game, I never did a dungeon in an MMO that's supposed to be social. I basically soloed in that game and that's what I did. Let me have some social, please. Please, make the cues pop. Now, on to MMO launches. First, we have Mad World. Mad World, the 2D isometric MMORPG currently in development, is still listed with a planned launch date of Fall 2022. This truly creepy, grotesque MMO has always stood out to me just because it's so different from the usual games we see. Now, Mad World is an interesting MMO because it has all the trappings of what you'd expect from an MMO. It has grouping, it has dungeons, it has bosses, it has loot, it has crafting, it has pets, it has pet growth, and it's all in a browser. It's a browser-based MMO, not unlike games from the past like Adventure Quest 3D, but a lot darker and creepier as you can see. But it's, it's an interesting HTML5 MMO that'll be very universal and easily accessible. Be interesting to see how this game fares and its unique take on the genre. And really, will it be able to find a, a home, a place in the current stable of MMOs? Glory of Victus. This game is still around? Yeah, so Gloria Victus, initially soft launching back in June of 2016 on Steam Early Access, is heading toward a final launch as the low fantasy skill-based PvP MMO could finally leave Early Access this year based on recent video titled Final Steps to Version 1.0, where it's mentioned that they plan to leave Early Access later this year. An early congratulations is in order to the team at Gloria Vindictus who have been hard at work for nearly a decade on their vision. Will Gloria Victus be competition for Mortal Online 2 in the PvP MMO space? I suppose it remains to be seen, but good job nonetheless. Moving on to something a bit more isometric, Fractured Online, the PvE PvP MMO with three races, each with their own unique playstyle, is currently in an always on closed beta. 
With a persistent world in place, frequent updates, and beta key giveaways, this feels ripe for release later this year. Closed beta began back in April around the time we got a roadmap through 2022. Winter 2022 is simply prepare for launch. Here's hoping we get to jump into this interesting MMO before the clock kicks over to 2023. Now the first game on this list that has an actual official release date is Temtem. The monster collection game that is totally not a Pokemon MMO will be moving from early access to launch on September 6th of 2022. Temtem will be available on PS5, Xbox Series XS, the Switch, and PC. If you're looking to scratch that itch you've had for ages of a Pokemon MMO, now's your chance. After two years of early access, Temtem has a very positive rating with over 26,000 reviews on Steam. This could be one of the sleeper hits of the year for the MMO space in my opinion, especially with its launch across multiple platforms. Now, testing phases. Predicting testing phases is a fool's errand, so I guess I'm a fool. That's not surprising, that's not really surprising. These are more conjecture than anything concrete. Consider this the most speculative part of the video. With testing phases, so much is subject to change. So many new, new issues come up. They're kind of squirmy. And they can take a lot longer. And then the actual, then you get into the actual definition of what testing phases are varying from company to company. Why am I doing this? I guess it's for the content, right? It's to keep you here and engaged. So, hi. First is going to be Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. With the HDRP and networking updates completed, the Pantheon team can now focus on the lengthy road to alpha list. On that list, nothing stood out as being quite as large a task as those two items, so we'll have to see what ends up happening. If we get alpha this year, I imagine it'll be toward the end. However, those that are in pre-alpha, it looks like we may be getting another pre-alpha session fairly soon. In the recent June newsletter, VIPs, pre-alpha, are being targeted for testing of the new network this summer. Now moving on to another game that has been covered on this channel, Ashes of Creation Alpha 2. It'll have been almost a year since Alpha 1, which ran from July 14th to August 15th of 2021, later this summer, and the Ashes team has been revealing some pretty interesting gameplay videos and feature explanations over the last few months since their move to the Unreal Engine 5. There's not much smoke here for Alpha 2 announcement, but if I see anything, I'll be sure to cover it here. Let's just hope for the best. As I look through some of the other MMOs in development, looking for any kind of updates that were, were substantial, I kind of came up empty. Star Citizen, Camelot Unchained, the day before was delayed to 2023, Project Gorgon, Monsters and Memories. There's nothing really super substantial about a change coming. Some of those games have playable clients right now under different testing phases, while others are still early on in their development phases. But as I continue to look for, out for anything new, I will definitely update you if we get anything substantial from any of these games. But I'd love to hear from you. What games are you excited about? What games in development are, are really something that you're looking forward to and hoping for this year? What MMOs are you planning to play later this year? Are you excited about any of the new expansions? Will you be playing them on release? Let me know down in the comment sections below. Are you interested in seeing how my predictions from earlier this year played out and when I tried to do my best uh, Doctor Strange impression? Well, take a look at this video here. And if none of these upcoming releases interested you, why not step with me back in time and look at some of the some of the craziest things that have happened in MMOs over the last couple decades? Some of them are really hard to believe. My name is Redbeard Flynn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you again next week.